Beryllium is the fourth element on the periodic table. It's considered an alkaline earth metal and is the lightest of this group. Physically and chemically, it is pretty similar to aluminum and is quite brittle at room temperature. On Earth, it has a high tendency to react with oxygen to form beryllium oxides, and due to this, it is not found naturally on this planet. The main way to obtain pure beryllium is to chemically extract it from a mineral called beryl. Beryl is a common mineral found in both granitic pegmatites and in mica schists, and can take many forms. Three of the most common forms of beryl are morganite, aquamarine, and most notably emerald. These gems formed the pathway towards the discovery of beryllium in 1798 at the hands of a French chemist by the name of Nicolas Louis Vogela. Vogela was born in 1763, the son of a French peasant. When he reached adulthood, he began working at an apothecary shop where he befriended French chemist Antoine Francois Fourcroix. Fourcroix eventually took in Vocala as his laboratory assistant in 1783, and he held that position for eight years. Throughout his career, Vocala was associated with 376 scientific papers, and many of these were with his mentor. By 1790, though, he began publishing works under his own authority, including the one in which he discovered beryllium. For many years leading up to the discovery, it had been known that two gemstones, Green Barrel and Emerald, looked very similar to one another. Green Barrel had been examined chemically by multiple scientists, but all their tests had incorrectly concluded that the gem consisted of silica, alumina, and iron oxide. It wasn't until French priest and mineralogist René Just Aoui closely examined both Green Barrel and Emerald that it was discovered that the two are in fact geometrically identical. Aoui, upon discovery, suggested to Vokula that he should examine both of these gemstones chemically. Before the suggestion by Aoui, Vokula had also overlooked Green Barrel because of the tests made by previous chemists. After all, such conclusive evidence seems not to be in need of such further testing. In 1798 though, his tests with Green Barrel found intriguing results suggesting that another substance resided in it that was not in fact alumina. He did this by constructing an acid solution of the barrel and adding caustic potash to it. This precipitated a hydroxide, and Vokola found many aspects of this hydroxide that did not match the properties of alumina. It did not react to form any alum, despite many efforts to create it, and also dissolved in ammonium carbonate. Interestingly, Vokala even noticed that the salts it did form had a sweet taste, which was also new. When he published his result in Annals of Physics and Chemistry, he dubbed this new hydroxide glucina, which means sweet. As to why chemists before him had come to incorrect conclusions, he chalked it up to those chemists assigning the task of analysis to their students, whose inexperience led to them being incapable of recognizing a new substance when they saw it. Vokala also later examined emerald through similar processes, and found significant amounts of glucina in that as well. He never successfully isolated the beryllium in a pure state, though. That would happen in 1828 by Friedrich Wuhler and Antoine Bussy independently, and later in 1899 through means of electrolysis by Paul Lebeau. And these experiments could probably make up an entire other video itself. Though Vokala never obtained beryllium in its pure form, he knew what he had isolated from beryl was a hydroxide, and a series of tests confirmed that whatever was bonded was not something previously seen. Vokala succeeded his mentor, Fourcroix, in 1809 as the professor of chemistry at the Paris Faculty of Medicine, and also isolated many more chemicals throughout his career. He is even known, and possibly more famously so, for discovering an entirely different element, chromium, which is also a topic I will cover in a future video. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Click here if you want to see more scientific progress made during this time period. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.